A thousand years ago, a secret union was created between a group of countless master weavers, who secretly allied themselves to carry out meticulous executions, they stabilized the chaos by killing targets provided by the looms, and they called themselves a brotherhood until today. In the middle of the city, an assassin with a mysterious impression entered a magnificent tower on the top floor. He stood proudly, his sharp gaze drifting across the horizon, scanning every construction worker in the neighboring buildings with great attention. The man instructed the woman to relax, warning that if her name was revealed her life would be inevitable. He put a bullet on the table and then asked the woman to find out where the owner got it. The woman observed every detail of the bullet with a microscope and concluded that its owner had such an extraordinary level of intelligence that the traces of the bullet were difficult to understand. The man screamed, but it was too late, as gunfire from a construction worker wiped out her life. The man immediately ran towards the back hall to open the elevator doors while maintaining a crouching position. He spurred himself forward as his vision changed to the sound of a racing heartbeat. The man ran across the hall with incredible speed causing books to fly as he broke through the window. He soared across the ravine and pulled out his gun while eliminating one by one the assassins who were there with his deadly shot. One of the killers was hiding behind a wall, so the man used his skills to deflect the bullet by swinging his gun to kill him, but he fell into a ravine. The man thought that the threat was over, but was suddenly killed when the man appeared from behind him. The man received a phone call that rang from his opponent's pocket, and was talking to someone named Cross who was saying goodbye to him, when he realized that he had been standing under the X sign a bullet suddenly penetrated his forehead, becoming a deadly boomerang that hit its source into the hand of a sniper sitting casually from a distance. Meanwhile, Wesley Gibson lives a monotonous life when he is trapped in a boring routine as an administrative employee at an insurance company. His minimal income is made even more difficult by the arrogant treatment of his boss Janice and his co-workers who often belittle his talents and abilities. His life story becomes increasingly complex with the shadows of the past when his father left his mother when Wesley was still a baby. Without many friends, he shares his life with his girlfriend in a small apartment in a rundown neighborhood near the city of Chicago. At the height of his suffering, Wesley's life turns to disaster when his girlfriend ruthlessly engages in a relationship that ruins sleeping with his co-worker and best friend Barry on a table that Wesley has just bought. One night, Wesley goes to the pharmacy to pick up his prescription, while a man named Cross secretly observes his movements, and suddenly Fox appears next to him and reveals that he knows his father. Fox continues the story that his father was the greatest assassin ever, but just died yesterday on top of a building. Wesley initially responds with laughter until Fox reveals that the killer is behind him, she pulls a gun while pushing Wesley down and starts shooting. In a panic, Wesley tries to run past Cross who sees him, so Fox quickly shoots a gas canister to provide cover. Wesley runs out of the building as fast as he can, while Cross hijacks one of the trucks and tries to crash it, but Fox drives a Ferrari and manages to save him just before the truck hits him. Cross was still chasing them, so Fox drive her car against the flow at high speed, creating chaos throughout the streets of Chicago, while Wesley sat in the passenger side screaming in panic. Cross managed to match the speed and started shooting at them from inside the truck breaking the car window, so Fox deftly broke through the glass while ordering Wesley to take over the wheel, while she turned around to return fire from Cross who was in the truck behind them. When a bus appeared from the front, Fox quickly bent her body to avoid the impact, while Cross fired a shot that could bend the bullet into their car, making Wesley startled and even more panicked when his car appeared to be about to collide with a police car. Fox quickly took over the wheel and the car made a sharp turn and jumped and flew over the police car and landed on top of the overturned bus, but they managed to survive and continued their journey with music playing until they reached a red light, where they were followed by two young men who stared at them in awe. Wesley awakens moments later in a damp warehouse filled with other strange hitmen, including the repairman, the butcher, and Malcolm, who surround him in a frightening manner and the fox is also present there. Group leader Sloan gives orders to Wesley to shoot the fly's wings in the trash, or Malcolm will shoot him in the head if he doesn't do it by the count of three. Wesley aimed at the fly with a pounding heart and miraculously managed to shoot off both wings with each attack. Wesley panics and intends to take his stress control pills, but Sloan immediately shows the catch which makes Wesley disbelieving, and Sloan quickly throws the medicine into the trash. Sloan explains that what he experienced was not a panic attack, but rather a reaction to the enormous energy flowing in his blood, and that only a select few have such abilities including Wesley and his father. But Wesley didn't believe what Sloan was saying, and while shaking he threatened to shoot with the gun he was holding. Sloan calmly explains that Fox and the men in the room are highly skilled at killing and will respond immediately if faced with a threat, so he advises Wesley not to aim at the others. Sloan then tells Wesley that the gun he was holding belonged to his father, and explains that Wesley's father was one of the fraternity members of their group. All of his father's assets will be carefully managed to bequeath to Wesley, with the condition that he must join the group to take revenge for his father's death. But Wesley remained hesitant, he frantically threatened the people in the room to give him way as he hurried to leave the building. The next day, Wesley wakes up next to his girlfriend and goes to the bathroom where he realizes that his gun is lying there, so he quickly puts it away. On his way to the office, Wesley withdrew money from an ATM and realized his balance had increased to $3 million, which lifted his mood greatly. Barry tries to tease Wesley, 
But this time Wesley responds by annoying Barry back by spreading a happy mood that Barry has never seen before when he leaves in surprise. When he sees the news about his father's murder on the computer, Janice arrives starting daily bullying which makes Wesley feel disgusted, and starts blaming Janice in front of everyone while revealing Janice's difficult childhood which may be the cause of her abusive behavior as a boss. He grabbed his keyboard, and walked out with a cool style in front of everyone who couldn't believe his change of attitude and Barry complimented him, he didn't hesitate to hit him with the keyboard. He left the office with a determined attitude, where he found himself featured in the newspapers as one of those involved in the shootout at the pharmacy that night. Wesley sees Fox coming and immediately joins her in the car, listening to music with positive energy flooding the atmosphere as they drive towards a textile factory on the outskirts of town. After getting out of the car, he met Malcolm who took him into the factory to meet Sloane. In frustration Wesley immediately asks if the factory is just a cover for their real work as assassins, even concluding with dismay that perhaps they make underwear there. However, Sloan only gives ambiguous answers before finally giving Fox a clue to give the real answer, and Fox and the repairman eventually take Wesley to a room where they tie Wesley to a chair and beat him until he passes out. Fox shows up with a tube to bring him back to consciousness, while Butcher is there with a pork chop attack and various rough drills, including shooting a corpse and stabbing him in the hand to make him pass out. All that practice just to get an answer to the question, why is he there? Wesley was then put in a pool of wax for days without food to repair his wounds, and the Russian man gave him vodka which he claimed would help the healing process of his wounds. Wesley recovered after several days of treatment and further training on how to guess and deflect bullets, a skill he doubted he could master. Sloan appears and reminds him to follow his instincts as he tries to practice shooting by deflecting the bullet until it hits the target precisely. Wesley follows Fox up the building while continuing to be frustrated with his inability to do the same, and Fox pushes him as a train passes beneath them causing him to scream. When the train was about to pass through the tunnel, Fox quickly lay down to get away, while Wesley tried to run to escape, but he was dragged and knocked back into the pool of wax. Meanwhile, Cross has been taking out the fraternity members one by one, leaving Sloane increasingly frustrated and revealing that Wesley is their only hope. Fox continues to train Wesley, this time with the task of catching a spool in a fast-moving loom which he always fails to do despite trying several times so he leaves in frustration. Wesley confidently revealed that he had proven his abilities on the first day when he managed to shoot a fly's wing, but Sloane stated that the final decision rested with Fox, who had been given the authority to decide on her eligibility. While Wesley is soaking in a pool of wax, a Russian man approaches him carrying a rat tied to an explosive device from an old watch. After proving that the device worked well, he stated to Wesley that with a thousand rats rigged with explosive devices he could destroy a building. But Wesley curses him and immediately accuses him of being crazy, when Fox appears from the pool and asks Wesley to go to the reservation room. As soon as he arrived, Wesley was immediately heavily attacked and continuously questioned about why he was there. The beatings continued until Wesley accidentally sigh he doesn't know who he is, and the answer proved correct. Sloan then shows a room similar to Wesley's room and says that it is Wesley's father's room. Wesley sees a photo of his father and wonders about what happened, so Sloan explains that Cross has defected from the fraternity and begins killing the group members one by one including Wesley's father. Sloan bequeaths the room to Wesley, hoping that brooding there might help him find answers about who he is, Wesley finally decided to take a path towards personal change that he had never even imagined before, and explore the potential that had been hidden for so long to open a new chapter in the exploration of his identity. He begins undergoing rigorous and grueling physical training, as well as tasks involving mental training, as part of a journey to seek revenge and reach his full potential. Fighting with weapons or bare hands, withstanding fatal blows from repairmen, catching rolls of paper in moving looms, and running on moving train cars, he has all been through it. But the one exercise that always made him struggle was bullet bending. A task he was finally able to do after making an arc around Fox and he almost shot off, but finally managed to hit the target to prove his worth. Sloan then takes him to a secret room, where he shows Wesley for the first and last time a device called the Loom of Destiny. This tool is a legacy from their ancestors thousands of years ago, and is the reason their fraternal group is united. In the threads of the Loom of Destiny there is a code that shows through binary the names of the people who are intended to cause chaos in the world when the Brotherhood discovers these names, they stabilize the chaos by killing targets provided by the loom, and Wesley gets his first target Robert Darren. He departs with Fox, who shows him photos of each side of the building where Darren is holding a meeting with his business partners. They ride on a moving train, but Wesley turns around at the last second and expresses his doubts to Fox and questions the validity of the loom and whether Darren worth dying for or not. Fox then tells the story of a young girl whose father was burned alive in front of her by a man named Max Petridge. Max is still alive because one of the Brotherhood members like them failed to kill him when his name came up as a target. Fox stated that no one knew how much impact their choice to kill one person who would have saved thousands would have. She ends the story by implying that the girl in the story is herself, and Wesley returns to complete the task and kills Darren with a curved shot that hits him in the stomach. Over the next few days, Wesley continues to receive assassination assignments, including a fat man in a limousine which he manages to complete with Fox's help, 
while continuing to hope that his next target will be Cross, who was his main goal when he joined the fraternity group. One night, Wesley returns to his apartment and sees Barry opening the door. Without hesitation, Wesley delivers a blow to Barry, and Fox kisses Wesley in front of his girlfriend, signaling that they leave their old lives behind completely. As they wait for Fox to find a car to leave, Wesley sees Cross out of the corner of his eye and Cross draws his gun as Wesley prepares to shoot and their bullets collide. Cross tried to escape, so Wesley gave chase while shooting from the top of the car, while Malcolm saw the incident when Wesley chased Cross who ran away into an empty building. Wesley tries to stay focused when he hears footsteps approaching, he accidentally shoots the Russian man who suddenly appears there with Malcolm and the repairman who came to arrest Cross. Suddenly Cross fires a curved shot that hits Wesley in the left shoulder. The Brotherhood tries to save the Russian man, but his life is saved, while Wesley tries to pull the bullet out of his shoulder and analyze it. He discovered that the bullets had been made by Pekwarsky who worked at a monastery in nearby Moravia, the location where the Brotherhood was formed. Wesley then asked for permission to confront Cross alone, and permission was granted only after he stated that this was a measure of revenge for his father's death. Once Wesley is gone, Sloane secretly slips Fox a new assignment from the Loom of Fate that has Wesley's name on it. When Wesley arrived at the place, he immediately saw Pekwarsky who was sitting alone in the church, but Pekwarsky quickly noticed Wesley's presence and immediately disappeared, only to reappear pointing his gun at Wesley and asking him firmly about the purpose of his arrival. However, Fox also appears there and tactfully advises Pekwarski to lower his weapon, and Wesley immediately demands information about Cross' whereabouts. While waiting for Pekwarski to arrange a meeting with Cross, Fox and Wesley peek out from a hidden place while talking about their plans, when suddenly they see Pekwarski trying to escape. They immediately chased him, and when Wesley realized Cross was on the train, he without hesitation chased Cross into the train, while Fox swiftly stole a car to follow the train. However, Pekwarski sees Fox leaving and quickly tells Cross that Wesley is now alone, Wesley held his gun vigilantly as he checked the train passengers one by one, creating panic among the passengers who didn't know what was happening. Suddenly, Cross grabs Wesley from behind in an attempt to talk to him, but Fox who was driving alongside the train immediately fires a surprise shot. Cross found himself in a bind, so he fired a curved shot around an old woman when Wesley with the same skill also performed a similar technique causing both bullets to collide with each other. Fox crashes her car into a train and Cross tries to kill her, but Wesley manages to deflect the bullet. When the train entered the tunnel, Fox's car got stuck, causing the train's wheels to slip and the train to fall into a ravine. Cross managed to catch Wesley's hand as he was about to fall from the carriage, but Wesley shot him just as their train carriage fell off the rest of the train throwing them into a ravine. In a dying state, Cross reveals the shocking truth that Wesley is his son. Wesley looks at Fox behind him while begging to know the real truth, and Fox admits that Wesley was chosen for the task because he was the only one Cross refused to kill. Realizing that he has been trapped, Wesley finally shoots the glass beneath him to let himself and Cross fall into the dark water. Wesley suddenly wakes up in a room directly across from his old apartment, where Pekwarski says his father was actually never far from him. Wesley finds a number of photos of his family, looking with regret at his actions which took the life of his own father. Pekwarski finally uncovers the truth, revealing that his father was a member of the fraternity who decided to defect after learning that Sloan found his own name in the loom. But instead of admitting it, Sloan manipulated the situation by making up the names of his targets for his own personal gain. Cross discovered this deceit, attempted to end the Brotherhood to provide a peaceful life for his son, and bravely sacrificed himself as the primary target. Pekwarski suggests that Wesley go somewhere to start a new, peaceful life as per his father's wishes. Once Pekwarski leaves, Wesley decides to investigate every corner of the house, finding items left by his father and an idea to attack the fraternity headquarters his father created. He begins his plan by buying up all the peanut butter in the supermarket, mixing it with chemicals to attract an army of rats, before finally moving towards the fraternity's headquarters. Wesley crashes through the fence of the fraternity headquarters in a truck, opening the bed to release thousands of rats rigged with explosives and timers that fill every side of the building and create a powerful explosion that injures most of the people inside. With a stylish leap, Wesley glided through the window with two pistols in his hands, he began mowing down the members of the fraternity all by himself while running to unleash a massacre with great courage. The repairman tries to destroy it, but Wesley immediately ends his life then grabs his gun, before he engages in a fierce fight with a butcher who he manages to defeat after driving a sword through his stomach. He then entered the library while shouting Sloane's name so loudly that it echoed in every corner of the room, and people wielding weapons began to surround him. He drops papers in Sloane's name on the table, and reveals about Sloane's misappropriation to the assembled group that Sloane himself cannot deny. He lays out the whole truth, revealing that every identity is emblazoned on the loom, he justified his actions by claiming that he had saved their lives, freeing them from obedience to the loom and the burden of fate. Sloane then presents the final choice to the assassins, choose to commit suicide according to the loom's code or end Wesley's life to live a life like a god. After a brief deliberation, Fox flashed a knowing smile at Wesley, pulling the trigger in an arc so that a single bullet sliced through the chamber, 
wiping out every assassin before it reached her, while the gun was fired towards Wesley, who was quick to catch as the bullet penetrated her head, taking her life. And how the film ends, Sloane manages to escape the chaos at the factory after Wesley screams his name. Wesley returns to his office as the ordinary individual he was at the start of the film, searching his name in the Google search engine. Sloane appears there, aiming his gun, but it's not Wesley when he realizes that he's standing under the exclamation mark, a bullet goes through his head, and retracts through Sloane's head, through the parked car window, bury Raya's drink, and finally through the bedroom window. Wesley where the first shots were fired. 